All right, Elliot from Marine Collectors with us yet again for the isolation box. Uh, you'll hear a little bit of why it's important, how to build one concepts, uh, what not to do, and some higher success rates with every fish as well using it. So let's start with uh, number one. This is the most rudimentary box you could ever find. It is very sloppily made, but it is a point that you could make this to. Anybody could do this mm -hmm. with a simple trip to Home Depot and it will save your fish why is something like this important? Please, some manufacturer go out and make these things because we would all buy them. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, isolation box is just, uh, I don't know, I think this should be like the new wave of things that people do. Like, you know, you acclimate your fish, this should be part of the acclimation. Uh, it's a great way to put the fish into the tank and let it settle, get it uh, conditioned. We've been talking a lot about getting fish conditioned to aqu uh, aquarium life. Um, box like this will do basically it's just a large ish uh, container or you could even just take a full sheet of plexiglass put it in the tank something to isolate a good chunk of size um, something that a fish could stay in there for an extended period of time not just a week but maybe three four a month maybe two depending on what it is how sensitive a fish it is um, but you know you could build something as simple as this and it would go a long way to making you a lot more successful with new additions so uh, what this is, is actually one that was just in my tank, uh, Malachi made it, because uh, what happened is the zebra tank in the 900 just was not doing well, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and he was getting harassed and getting fins bit and whatever, and it was yeah. just time, he needed to go. It just wasn't, he wasn't hanging out with his tank mates very well. I decided to put him into the 360. And so what we did is just build a little box, whipped it up real quick, you know, we used uh, some tunes magnets to hold it to the glass. And then we let him live in there for like three weeks. Did more this morning. We let him go and no problems. Uh, I should say that it got bumped and he got set free three days in. And man, did he get attacked. If we had just put him in there, he'd be dead. Yeah. Uh, but it was two things. One, that like daily, you know, nobody likes a new entrance into the tank, mm -hmm. right? Two, he was weak from getting attacked in the other tank. He just wouldn't have made it. What we did here is we were able to feed him for weeks. We were able to get him accustomed. They were able to see each other. And then we let him go out. They did their little dance, uh, especially the Achilles did a little mm -hmm. dance with them. Now they're just fine. Yep. We went and checked on him a minute ago, yep. right? Okay, so what this looks like again is just this little box. Uh, it's got a whole couple holes drilled in it. And it's big enough that the fish can live in there for a few weeks. If you do that, all the aggression crap just goes in the garbage. You know, yeah. not all, I shouldn't say, but like a vast, vast majority of these problems just mm -hmm. won't ever happen to you. Yeah. You know, combined with other things too, like uh, we had a different uh, tang in there that we added that was a problem and it was still a problem. But what <laughs> Malachi did was did the isolation box and then where simultaneously when he let it go, we also put a mirror on the glass mm -hmm. and so the mm -hmm. mirror pissed off all the fish in the tank uh, <laughs> more than the new tank entry did so it was like a combination of elements that mm -hmm. actually work so uh i want to you to start uh actually before we get to how to build one start telling us why you hate this one right? uh, other than how ugly it is <laughs> all right so the way that this one was working right is that this side of the box uh, had the, a magnet inside and a magnet outside the tank and this entire pane ended up just growing algae in between the glass and the box. Um, the boxes I use on my personal fish, it's literally just this, these three pieces of acrylic. I usually do it at a quarter inch. Um, it goes top to bottom. Uh, that way it can just sit in there. Um, and that way you don't have one, the risk of uh, fish getting caught in between the box and the glass, but you also don't have this uncleanable surface uh, just turning green. It definitely happens. Uh, this side up against the glass definitely turned brown from yeah. all the algae on it and you couldn't mm -hmm. see see through it. Uh, also, uh, my very first one of these I built, uh, I let I, I just used the weight of the acrylic box no. and I just kind of pushed it up against the glass. And then I looked over while I was on the phone with you at one point in time <laughs> and the uh, purple tank had like mm -hmm. wedged himself in between there. Mm -hmm. And yet it couldn't have been in there for more than a minute. And he was a goner. He had damaged yeah. his scale so bad trying to get out. Yeah. And, uh, he had like enormous patches where it's just skin was gone. It was really sad in yeah. one minute, man. So like if you're going to use these things, we're real careful. We use these big, heavy tunes magnets to hold it. If you're going to have this side do it, we 
we want it flush with the glass yeah. so that that won't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that we have explored too with this is I used to drill like eight million holes in yeah. it to try to get flow into it. Mm -hmm. uh, this time all we did is aim a power head at the outside going in one of these things. You just mm -hmm. kind of got to get it turned over a little bit. Yeah. But if you really wanted to, you could take like something like a maxi jet and these little holes are about the size of a maxi jet port. Mm -hmm. You just put it in there and it would, you know, Keep yep. water turning over inside. Honestly, the... you really don't need a ton of holes or even very big holes. If you have good flow in the tank, it's not like, especially if you only have one or two fish in there, there's going to be enough exchange that you don't have to worry about the fish. Uh... It's not like gas exchange yeah. for me. What it is is on the bottom, the f excess food and mm. waste and stuff piles up on the bottom. Yeah. And I want to keep that suspended and leaving the box. So if you get that waste build up in there, yeah. maybe like a little power head on the side will help you uh, uh, solve that. See, that's why I don't have a bottom on mine. It just goes to it the goes bottom. The sand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, just three. Now, to do the three ace though, or to do the three uh, walls, mm -hmm. you got to think about this differently. So yeah. uh, it's got to be stronger than this one. Yeah, so I don't know if you can tell, but this is like 16th inch uh, acrylic or plexi, the stuff that you get at Home Depot. So it looks uh, like this, uh, and you can buy this at Home Depot. It's pretty inexpensive, yeah. but the stuff that's twice as thick, which is a quarter inch, yeah. is, uh, it's actually eighth inch is what it is. But if, it, if it's the, the quarter inch stuff is, yeah. You know, twice as expensive and the project just got to a hundred bucks instead of 50. But you know what? It's probably not going to break and you're going to get to use it a lot for every edition. You will probably be happier. Uh, one of the reasons that we also used it, uh, used this uh, thin stuff. And like everybody's going to argue with every one of these steps. And I welcome the arguing because <laughs> uh, there is no right or wrong way. We just address different problems. Like not everybody owns a whole slew of tools for this. Yeah. You know, and so quarter inch uh, plexi doesn't really snap. Yeah, it doesn't snap very easily. Very well, like it, it tends to have like a bevel on the edge and yeah. stuff, right? Whereas with this, you know, the only thing that I'm doing is using this little hook tool and I score it, you know, put mm -hmm. a ruler down or score it and you just snap it into the size. You don't need a saw or a Dremel or yeah. a router or any of that stuff. And then you can build one of these things. Now this is flimsy though. There's no question yeah. about it, right? But uh, for the purpose that it's using for, it doesn't need to be like structurally sound and yeah. like, hold up the walls of your house. It's just a dividing thing. It's not uh, structural. So like, just to give you like, this is the most rudimentary version of this you could possibly <laughs> build, but all you would do is get a sheet of that from Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. So usually you like kind of buy where they sell the sheets of glass and sometimes mm -hmm. screens and stuff. You use, they also sell this guy there. Hey, you're just gonna score it into the, the sizes that you want and then glue it. I would suggest picking up one of these little plastic guys too, so you can you know get a square out of it before you glue it. Yep. Sometimes some double stick tape on the bottom of it to hold it in place. Uh, and then this is the part that's total blasphemy. <laughs> We hold it together with super glue. Now, <laughs> super glue is not a good option for acrylic. If you're like trying to hold water together, yeah. you should go get solvent. Yeah, you know, weld like, on 16 or weld on four. Weld on four or 16. So four will go really gl glue really fast, mm -hmm. but you really need to have fairly good seams in that case, yeah. which you probably should have routed the seams or at least use an acrylic uh, circular yeah. saw. Or if you have a plastic, uh, supply store they could just cut the pieces to size for you and then you don't have to worry about doing any it just assemble it or for, for god's sake somebody in our industry could just make <laughs> these things uh, so that somebody could buy them i'm calling kyle elder uh, adaptive reef uh, <laughs> on my way home today and tell him make these damn yeah. things okay so uh but with the super glue the super glue will absolutely hold it together uh, mm -hmm. And and then what I also use is the accelerator because I want to super glue it and it actually takes a really long time. So I kind of want to wick it into the, the where it's holding together and the accelerator when I spray it on there will instantly hold it. Do you like that more than the, like coral glue? Than coral glue? Yeah. Yeah, I like the liquid stuff for this project. Mm. So like the gel, like uh, I just, I want it to dry in instantly fast. Yeah. And the gel like will dry on the outside but not necessarily in the inside. Mm. So uh, this is kind of like a hybrid usually of like, it's liquidish gel. You know, it's not as extra <laughs> thick like frag plug glue. Uh, I, I think you can use whatever you want to drill the holes. You can use a normal drill bit, mm -hmm. but then due to the angle that the drill bit's at, 
it catches at the last second. And then what will happen is you'll see a spider crack yeah. uh, all the time. If you use these stepper bits uh, that have various sizes in it, it just kind of like carves a hole mm -hmm. to, that goes through nice and clean. And so what I'll do is take my ruler because uh, I want it to look fairly nice when I'm done, or at least uniform. Uh, <laughs> this is this doesn't meet that standard, but uh, I, I will score the little holes where I want, and then I'll come back with the stepper bit and yeah. you know drill the holes in a more uniform fashion. Yeah, uh, I think you could, you can also get plexiglass drill bits that have a mm -hmm. much sharper angle on them than your standard like wood bit or whatever. Yep. Uh, I don't know how the paddle bits would work, but I think they'd shatter it too. I, I think it would catch. Yeah, yeah, I don't uh, think that'd be safe. Yeah, uh, th these stepper bits are the way to go, in yeah. my opinion. Oh, yeah. Uh, so a couple of things, though. Like, I am with you. If I were, you know, going to stock my tank, if I was going to add one more fish, I'd just build the cheap, cheapest thing I could find. Uh, if I was going to start this from the beginning, mm -hmm. I'd actually go do what you did, which is I would go get, figure out the size that I need to go from top to bottom uh, yep. on the tank. I would uh, get the quarter inch stuff instead of this flimsy stuff because mm -hmm. it's not going to hold the 90 degree angle otherwise, yeah. right? Uh, and then I'd probably find some weld on instead of super glue, mm -hmm. uh, preferably. And weld on 16, by the way, is like a thicker, goopier stuff. Yeah. It, needs, it takes longer to dry, but it's more user friendly, like yeah. beginner friendly than the well stuff you're going to put inside that little needle tube. Yeah. Uh, and it also, the the, you know, like cuts don't have to be as perfect. Yep. Right? It kind of fills in the gaps of the cuts. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, uh, they call it like the acrylic equivalent of silicone, but it's not really. It's it's still a solvent, but uh, it'll fill the gap. So one of the things that like I, I'm going to ask your opinion on, I'm considering like what I would I put a little tab here where I could still use a magnet to hold it close to the, the tank so it doesn't get out, you know, that nothing doesn't get bumped or anything or are you even anti little tabs and just full three sides only um uh, i don't know i mean i think use whatever works it's something is better than nothing um the reason that i've tried to have it uh be just the three sides is because when i go to pull it out of the tank i could just lift it straight up and the fish will just swim out i don't have to like reach in there tip it over you know, um, I don't have to worry about food collecting in the bottom. Um, you know, obviously it'll depend on the style of tank, uh, you know, or where your aquascape is. Um, but it's just a matter of preference. It all works. If the hobby embraced this thing as every new fish addition to the aquarium used one of these, I bet you you could cut mortalities in half. Oh, yeah. Like system wide, yeah. man. Mm -hmm. Probably worst thing that ever happened to coral wholesalers if we all adopted just this one thing, yeah. uh, because it's just it works so easy. The coral, the fish you get used to uh, the other fish that are in there. You let it go, and they just really will do a little dance. They'll you know show mm -hmm. a little bit of aggression, but they're not actually biting each other or slapping each other with their like uh, little fins in the back yep. or uh, nails in the back. All right, so. Uh, is there, we had concepts here, man, of you should keep in mind. Is there anything on top of that that we've already covered that you would say, man, I would make it this way? Um, yeah, when you're drilling the holes, I would do, or I would prefer to have a few larger holes opposed to a crap ton of smaller holes, just because uh, if you think about a fish running this wall, you kind of end up getting this like cheese grater effect. Um, if you want to be really uh, meticulous about it, you could even take sandpaper and soften that edge, especially on the inside. Yeah, so um, that sandpaper like like this, I use it just to soften these edges, uh, but it's just a piece of paper and you just kind of run it over mm -hmm. the edge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I mean, it's just, I think it, the concept is just something's better than nothing. You know, ideally you want to do it with the idea that you could be keeping that fish in this box for its extended period of time, not just, you know, a day or two. Okay, so in the spirit of the, the cheese grater comment, mm -hmm. uh, you actually came here one day and I built this and I was so proud of myself. <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, you know what would be way better than this <laughs> and readily available is let's just make one out of uh, egg crate, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I can hold it together with zip ties. 
And it worked really, really well. I mean, you just, all you have to do is, you know, you, to, to break uh, egg crate, all you gotta do is take a screwdriver and you just whack it and you can get a nice little square of the stuff. Mm -hmm. We whacked it into the right shape. And we got some black zip ties and we held it in the corners and it held really sturdy. It was surprising. Yeah. It was like the easiest project known to man. And then you came in and it was like, that is a terrible thing, Ryan, don't do that. Cause they, they will just grate themselves back and forth and they'll damage themselves. It won't be safe for them. Yeah. So one of those things to keep in mind. Yep. Uh, and that, that hits to your bigger holes, especially if the fish uh, isn't big or isn't tiny. Yeah. So, uh, some fish will make their way in and out of this. I definitely have had little wrasses decide to come join everybody for the party on the inside, uh, <laughs> and then they'll leave on their own. Yeah. Um, uh, so anything that you really wouldn't do when making one of these things? Uh, I think we covered most of it. I mean, it's uh, don't have there be a small gap in between the two panes. Uh, avoid any kind of cheese grater effect. Uh, go as large as possible. Yeah. I, is like as big as humanly possible. It doesn't hit your uh, aquascape is the right solution. Yeah. I mean, uh, like when I first got you those, uh, Hawaiian yellow antheas, the captive bred ones, I mean, they were super tiny and you kept them in there for months, right. Mm -hmm. Until they were, got big enough to release. Uh, you know, that's more the concept of like, okay, this fish is going to be in there for a substantial amount of time. That should be the mentality that you go into it with. Um, if you're going to buy a box, though, I will say just keep in mind that cheese grater effect. Uh, like a lot of them will have like vertical slats. Well, they're usually uh, tiny, man. Yeah, and they're usually very small. But um, try to pick one that doesn't have a ton of uh, the like main pane that's occupied by holes or slats just because where the fish is going to move, they'll either mess up its mouth or its side, its eyes. Um, it's really just don't injure the fish. I'm going to call Kyle today. So we should, <laughs> we should actually, uh, come along for the ride here. Uh, what <laughs> should I actually call Kyle and ask him for? So before I get to that though, one of the other options here, like you just don't got time for this. You don't want glue. You don't want to monkey around with all this garbage. This is, can be as simple as scoring out one of those pieces and snapping it off. So that it's just a sheet that goes in the corner mm -hmm. of the tank. Now, Obviously that's good for some type fish and not others, you yeah. know, because it needs to have enough room that your tank can swim around and that mm -hmm. fish doesn't, like the, the zebra tank was fine just in here for weeks, just kind of swimming back and forth. But if it was like a tower, that the fish doesn't normally yeah. live in a tower environment. You know? um, yeah, or like if you could uh, go front to back, you know, if your aquascape allows for it, just, you know, end of the tank, you could isolate, you know, however much space is available. Um, you know, you could always do the front corner if the fish are small, just because, you know, need space to turn around, um, a couple holes. I mean, it's, it could be really, really simple. It doesn't have to be anything complex. You know, like, I want to go check this out. Like one of the things that just came to mind is what if you got one of those hang on refugiums and you just put the refugium portion mm. on the inside of the tank? Yeah. I mean, because they're generally about yay yeah. wide and about this Yeah, long. like the bigger sizes. Huh? Yeah. Could yeah. you just hang it inside out uh, yeah. on the tank? Yeah, and, a new product to make. Well, and like, <laughs> done deal, right? Uh, it's, I suppose the way that would work then is the flow would probably go into the room. But you'd have to jerry-rig it a little well, bit. yeah, just, yeah, I'm sure there's a way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so when I call <laughs> Kyle, this is what comes to mind, right? <laughs> what comes to mind for me is I heard what you had to say. I still like the full box kind of style <laughs> and that it's magneted to the glass because I might have stuff on the bottom uh, mm -hmm. of the, the yeah, tank. You could have corals, fit, yeah. you know? Okay. So what if what we did is he had magnets, they were already built into it. So you don't have to buy these super expensive tunes guys, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the ping and the glass in the front, was lightly smoked so it doesn't grow algae in there but you can still see the fish through it mm. right and then the other sides and then instead of having all these holes he has the slits but the slits have been rounded with the router yeah. and so and, and especially the bottom has uh, slits so the waste and stuff well, can come out. i mean yeah the uh ideal way would if like the entire bottom was uh just 
a bunch of slits or a grid or something, I think that would be even better. A rounded edges, though, so it yeah. can't grade itself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, what do you think about the smoked idea? I think that if you can still see through it, light's going to come through and it's still going to grow algae. It's going to be like one-tenth the amount of uh, par coming through there. Sure, but if it's going to grow algae, then wouldn't you still not be able to see the fish? The whole point of it being clear. Prototype. <laughs> uh, we're going we're to have to find out. Okay, uh, we'll come along for the ride. Uh, anybody you know that makes acrylic stuff, tell them, like, for God's sake, this is the future. Mm -hmm. uh, we you should all be using these things. If you use this, it can change the way the success rates. It could like double, triple the success. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I say double, triple, with a lot of fish, like adding a tang after you have other tangs, I bet you 10x is the success rate. Just try it with those purples when you move them around. Okay, we had two purple tanks we're going to move soon. Uh, we are maybe going to try it with our new smoked apparatus. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we will see you guys soon. Uh, we join you here for the isolation box conversation. Uh, it's not a straight up how to because, frankly, man, it, it doesn't require that. You can see it's the box. You measure it. You assemble it. You glue it together. It's really easy. Uh, everybody should do one of these things. If you want to see more material like this one, man, we invite people like Elliot in all the time. The playlist is right here. And subscribe because we're coming back at you next week.